the rarest DS games. What up, friends? My name is Stan from Random Tens, and after a bit of a hiatus, I'm back with the rarest DS games ever released. As mentioned in past episodes of this series, the Nintendo DS was an absolute monster of a system over its lifespan, eventually even surpassing the original Game Boy as the best-selling Nintendo handheld of all time. But hidden among this vast library of revolutionary games are a few gems, and today we'll be taking a look at the rarest of the bunch. It's worth pointing out, however, that similarly to the rarest Wii games, because the system's barely over a decade old, you won't find anything crazy expensive or collectible here. There's definitely some games on this showcase, especially the last entry, that cost an extra life's worth of coins, but overall these games are fairly affordable, so if you're looking to get into collecting, keep an eye on a few of these titles, as they could grow rarer as time goes on. But with that out of the way, I'll stop yapping and get into the games. Being one of the best-selling systems of all time, the Nintendo DS was home to many licensed and third-party games during its historic run. And despite loads of these licensed titles being considered collectible, for now I'll be focusing on just one of these games. Inuyasha Secret of the Divine Jewel, released stateside in early 2007, is your typical RPG featuring the cast and locales of the popular manga series. Developed by Artco Limited and published by Namco Bandai, Secret of the Divine Jewel was produced mainly for North American audiences, which is a shame as it didn't do so well here in terms of sales. Released in small numbers initially, the game is now considered one of the most elusive licensed titles on the system, and despite some bad reviews, still fetches somewhere around $35 US for a complete in-box copy. In recent years, games like Inuyasha have actually come down a bit in price, so it may be best just to wait this trend out and react accordingly. But for now at least, this one is still considered among the rarest DS games. With the release of the Wii in late 2006, Nintendo officially cemented their dominance over the seventh generation of gaming. And so, it only made sense for the wealthy company to double down on both of its flagship systems, which brings us to our next collectible. Dokapon Journey, like its Wii predecessor, was published by the always elusive Atlas in North America, and just like Dokapon Kingdom, this DS puzzle RPG hybrid was a pain in the butt to find almost immediately upon release. Arriving in the West in spring 2009, Dokapon Journey has seen a small price jump in recent years, and now sells complete in box for around $60 US. Despite not having the tightest of gameplay, with that Atlas logo on the box, Dokapon Journey is definitely an entry that could continue climbing rarity charts, especially given another Atlas title we'll see later on in this video. Like many, I hadn't heard of this next title until only recently, but if you're looking for a solid action game on the DS, then look no further than Solitorobo The Red Hunters. Developed by Japanese studio CyberConnect2 and released in North America in September 2011, this underrated gem lets players take control of Red. No, not that Red. This primary colored protagonist is an anthropomorphic dog who uses a small mecha to defeat enemies and solve puzzles as he takes on the Curvaz organization. Created as a spiritual successor to the similarly themed tale Concerto, Solitorobo became tougher to find stateside as time passed, and after only a few years has already become one of the most prized games for DS collectors. Today the Red Hunters can be yours for around $75 US for a complete inbox copy. However, it should be noted that this year in particular showed a lot of signs of growth, so don't be surprised if this dog eventually has its day. So what could possibly be worse for collectors' bank accounts than a game published by Atlas? How about a game developed by them too? That's right, in February 2011, Atlas released the critically applauded Radiant Historia to North American audiences. This time travel RPG title was a bit of a darling among gaming journalists, as well as many fans of the genre. However, as with most Atlas releases, the game soon became impossible to get a hold of. This was alleviated, however, by Atlas issuing a reprint in 2012, where demand cooled down quite a bit, and the standard edition of Radiant Historia continues to remain readily available even today. The deluxe edition with bonus CD, on the other hand, is a different story. 
Released as the de facto collector's edition at launch, this handheld game tops many DS showcases as the rarest title released in North America. With very few sales and steady demand for well-made RPGs, it's hard to put an exact price on this one. But I did manage to find a complete in-box CD version for around $75 US before shipping, which based on what I've seen of both Atlas and RPG secondhand prices in general, may actually be a solid price. Either way, this is an underrated gem on the system, and if you like JRPGs with cool mechanics and a brilliant soundtrack, then I advise you to check out Radiant Historia for yourself. Just maybe start with the reprint edition first. This final entry is one that will make a few people watching scratch their heads in disbelief, but I promise you this game is the real deal. Now, it's no secret that as of the last decade, Link and his signature series have fared extremely well on handheld devices, but did you know that the rarest DS game of them all is technically a Zelda title? So which one could it be? Phantom Hourglass? Spirit Tracks? How about Twilight Princess? That's right, the rarest DS game ever released is in fact The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess DS. Confused? Well, let me explain a little better. Basically, to promote the blockbuster game to journalists and diehard fans, Nintendo commissioned around 500 demo cartridges of the game for their popular handheld at E3 2004. Needless to say, this was sort of a weird practice at the time, but regardless, attendees were allowed to keep these cartridges, which featured no gameplay but rather a short movie made up of in-game cutscenes and story. So yes, for those calling me out right now, technically the deluxe edition of Radiant Historia is still the rarest DS game ever released, but damn if the Twilight Princess demo isn't one of the coolest collectibles in Nintendo's long history. Today you can get your hands on one of these coveted cartridges for about $500 US on the secondhand market, but with the Zelda fandom growing more massive with each passing year, I imagine these promo carts will one day be the crown jewels in many Zelda collections. Just make sure that it's authentic before buying one, as they only come loose. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of The Rarest, but there's plenty more on the way, so if you didn't see your prize game on this showcase, leave a comment and maybe it'll make part two. Also, I want to thank everybody for their patience waiting on this series. I promise more games and rare collectibles are on the way this fall. And as I always say, happy hunting, baby rhinos. Peace.